Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudabuyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15W51B of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. And this is the third in a sequence of videos in which I try to explain the mechanics of Minecraft liquids. Uh, in the uh, previous video, I went over the uh, data values used for liquids, um, the difference between flowing liquids and still liquids, uh, and the categoriz categorization of blocks with respect to the spread of liquids as either obstructions or non-obstructions. Uh, this video is going to be the first of two parts that uh, covers the mechanics of how liquids spread. Uh, I'm breaking this, uh, breaking up this discussion into two parts because there's just there's just so much material here that I'm afraid the video would be too long otherwise. Uh, okay, so a, uh, a block of flowing water, uh, whether it is a source block or otherwise, could be spreading water or falling water, uh, it can spread uh, down or to any adjacent side that's not occupied by a water obstructing block. Um, that's uh, any of the um, five blocks of clear glass here. Uh, but it's not gonna it's not gonna spread into all of these positions necessarily, even in the total absence of obstructions. Um, before a block of flowing water spreads, uh, it first checks for a terrain depression along each unobstructed path within a taxicab distance of five at the same y level as the water. Um, so the uh, the block itself uh, of the water itself would be considered a path length of zero. Um, here is a path uh, path length of three. Um, uh, here's another path of length five that ups that subsumes the path of three. Um, let's see. Here would be a um, uh, another path of five that circumvents an obstruction, uh, and and so on. Uh, along each path, uh, we're going to search for a terrain depression. Uh, which is simply a non-obstructing block at the Y level that's one block below the water. So all of this, uh, uh, all of this clear glass here, um, uh, this, is, um, this is what we're looking for, terrain depressions, anything that's a non-obstructing block uh, in this layer here. Uh, uh, that could be air, tall grass, fire, or, or any other non-obstructing block. Uh, now, if the search finds one or more terrain depressions, the water will flow along all shortest paths that reach a terrain depression. Uh, so here we have a path of length 3 and a path of length 4, and the water is going to follow only the shortest path. Uh, um, and uh, note, though, that the water, uh, that the uh, path here has to be an un unobstructed path, uh, regardless of the raw distance. Um, so the path here, uh, the path of length 4 here, is now the shorter one, because the obstruction makes the distance to this hole actually a path of 5. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, because it has to go around the obstruction. So the water is going to choose the path of 4 now. Uh, and uh, water is going to spread along all paths of equal length to a terrain depression, uh, and it will spread um, along uh, all paths of equal length, uh, even if they reach the same terrain depression. Okay. Uh, now, uh, this search is actually relatively expensive as a check, because the number of possible paths can be high. Uh, in the loosest definition of the word path, uh, more than 1,300 paths could need to be checked, and that's going to be for each block of flowing water for each tile tick it receives. Uh, to make matters worse, uh, the search can actually force chunk loading if a checked path extends into an unloaded chunk. Uh, so over here is a fun little experiment. Uh, all right, so um, far away, uh, I've got a, uh, a little redstone clock, uh, five redstone ticks on and five off, uh, and its signal is output along this line of redstone here. Uh, now, the, the line isn't blinking because the clock is too far away. It's, it's in an unloaded chunk, uh, but a as we move closer, uh, we'll see this line start to blink. There we go. Okay, let's go a little faster here. It's pretty far away. Okay, now um, here's my clock. Uh, nearby the clock, um, I have um, I have a dispenser set up to place a water source uh, uh, when it receives a redstone signal along this other independent line. There we go. Okay, um, simple enough. 
uh, now, uh, when the water is placed, uh, as we just saw, it will uh, it will be flowing water, and so in order to spread, it's going to search for terrain depressions when it receives its first tile tick. Um, but we've got the terrain depressions on either side here, uh, so the water is ultimately going to spread only in those two directions. Um, just as I showed before, we've got the water just flowing directly to those terrain depressions because they were they are within that taxicab distance of five uh, from the source block here. Uh, now, the wool here identifies a chunk boundary. Uh, the clock is in the chunk marked by the black wool, uh, and the dispenser is in the chunk, uh, in the neighboring chunk marked by the white wool. Uh, from the point at which the water is placed, uh, right here, um, there is uh, exactly one block of the clock chunk uh, in the search area. So one, two, three, four, and five. Just uh, this block is the only one that can be reached within a tax cap distance of five uh, from the flowing source block. Uh, okay, so um, uh, note though that water is not actually going to spread along this path, and, and that's important. All right, let's go test. Now this button down here, um, this marks uh, the uh, this marks a position at which the dispenser chunk is still loaded, uh, but the clock chunk is unloaded. Uh, and uh, even though our, our redstone line here is activated, we can see that it stopped blinking. So uh, pressing this button will activate the dispenser and place the water block, uh, causing the search. Uh, and if the clock chunk is loaded for the search, uh, we'll see the alternating signal of the clock. And there you go. Uh, okay, so just to double check. Okay, we can see the water there. All right, the, the water has uh, spread uh, just as expected to the sides and uh, not actually into the clock chunk. Now, if the dispenser had been placed one block further back um, with the search area completely outside the clock chunk, uh, we wouldn't have seen the signal, uh, signal of the clock. And, and this demonstrates two things. The first is that merely the search for the terrain depressions can forcibly load chunks. Um, it wasn't the water that was spreading that caused the chunk, uh, the clock chunk to be loaded, just the search. Um, the second thing that was demonstrated is a little bit more subtle, and I've, I've done some additional experiments to demonstrate this a bit more precisely, uh, but all unobstructed paths of five or less uh, seem to be followed until a terrain depression is found regardless of whether shorter paths exist. So a terrain depression here um, uh, or, um, or an obstruction here uh, would short circuit the search along all paths that start with this block. Uh, in, in that case the clock chunk wouldn't be loaded uh, because the search wouldn't actually be able to reach the clock chunk. Uh, but since the path is clear of both terrain depressions and obstructions, uh, it's followed into the unloaded chunk, uh, regardless of the fact that water will not actually spread along this path. Uh, and that's because shorter paths to terrain depressions exist. Uh, um, and uh, my guess is that there's probably room for improving the performance of the game code here. Uh, you know, we're, we're checking a whole bunch of paths that, that the water can't possibly spread along, uh, and remember that this search is going to be performed for each block of flowing water for each tile tick it receives. So it's, it can be pretty expensive, and we're doing a lot of those checks that are just unnecessary. Okay. Uh, now, if the uh, search discovers no terrain depressions, uh, the water will flow into all adjacent blocks uh, to the side that, um, uh, that don't obstruct liquid. So all four of these blocks here. Uh, and uh, when each of the blocks of newly spread water receives a tile tick, uh, the same search is going to be performed. So it's you know, kind of recursive that way. Uh, the taxicab distance of 5 is still going to be used for the search, uh, regardless of the fact that the data value of the spreading water here, the newly spread water, is going to be 1 greater than the data value of the water from which it spreads. Uh, and this means that a block of spreading water uh, with a data value greater than 2 can attempt to spread directly towards a terrain depression that cannot be reached. So all of this water here, starting with this, uh, starting with this block, is attempting to flow directly to this, uh, to this terrain depression, uh, but there's no way that the spreading water can reach it. Uh, so it, it looks a little bit weird. 
Uh, and uh, that brings me to, uh, to lava <laughs> and the uh, change that was the impetus for this series. Now, it used to be that lava in the overworld used the same taxicab distance of five blocks when searching for terrain depressions. Uh, this despite the fact that lava can spread only a distance of four blocks if you if you include the source block. So uh, Minecraft issue 46034, I think it was, uh, was filed about two years ago, and that was resolved for snapshot 15w49a by limiting the search to a taxicab distance of three blocks instead of five, uh, except in the nether where it's still five blocks, and that's why the nether rack extends out here a couple of extra blocks. Uh, now, this diminishes but does not actually correct the idiosyncratic behavior. Um, so let's uh, check lava now. This is post uh, snapshot 15w49a. Uh, and the lava right here <laughs> um, is, uh, is still spreading only towards a terrain depression that cannot be reached. Um, and the same thing exists for water, as we saw just a moment ago. So I have no idea why Mo Yang only now decided that this was an issue worthy of tinkering uh, in order to half address the relevant report. Um, in my opinion, this was a bad decision because it modified a long-standing game, mechan game mechanic really to no clear benefit. Uh, what this change means in practice mostly um, is that uh, lava from lava springs is going to spread more because it will be spreading along more paths. Uh, so expect larger lava falls and extreme hills uh, along with uh, uh, maybe some greater subsequent uh, um, devastation uh, and uh, some caves filled with greater amounts of spreading lava. Uh, okay, and um, that is all for this video. Uh, in the next video, uh, I will be finishing up the discussion of how liquids spread. Um, uh, more specifically, I will be talking about the two exceptions to the mechanics discussed in this video uh, and the flip side of liquid spreading, uh, which is liquid dissipation. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments.